So now we'll discuss asymptotic order of growth. So I said you cannot uh, associate any unit or any constant for runtime of the algorithm. Instead, you are expressing this that as function of n, right? So what is the objective of using this asymptotic notation here is to compare and rank the order of the growth of an algorithm, you are using this asymptotic notation. What do you call that as? Asymptotic notation. So why do you require to use this? So computer scientists and uh, mathematicians uh, use this uh, asymptotic notation in order to compare and rank the order of the algorithm. There are three uh, notations I'm using here. The first one is big O, big O of GN. So this contains class of functions that is TN that has got the smaller order of growth compared to GN. So all set of all functions which is having smaller order of growth compared to GN is classified into big O of GN. Similarly, theta, when do you use theta notation? So whenever you have a uh, algorithm whose runtime is say TN, if it is having the same order of growth compared to GN, then you are classifying that into theta of GN. And if the order of growth of the uh, uh, like uh, program is TN and that is compared with GN, if it is having the larger order of growth compared to GN, then you are classifying that or you can say that TN belong to omega of GN. So there are three notations here, big O, theta and omega. So big O, when do you use? So when the order of growth of this TN is smaller compared to GN, and when it is same order of growth compared to GN, you are classifying into theta of GN and omega of GN, that is when the order of growth is larger compared to GN, you are saying that TN belong to omega of GN. So GN is our standard. So what are the standard functions or basic efficiency classes you can use? GN can be log into base two or it can be n, n log n to base two, n square, n cube to power n, n factorial. Okay, you got the idea. So what is gn? So gn is not associated with any constant here. So am I saying two log n to base two or n plus two n plus log n plus log n to base two plus 10? So I cannot write. So basic efficiency class can be one of these uh, listed in this table. You got the idea? Yeah. Yes, it can be log n, n, n log n to base to n square, n cube, uh, 2 power n, n factorial, okay. Uh, even if you want to you introduce new like basic efficiency class, it can be n power 4 like that you can use, okay, but not associated with some constant that I'll tell you why you cannot associate any constant with the basic efficiency class that we'll discuss later. So CN here, I'm using these three functions here. The first one is CN. So CN will give you the count of the basic operation, okay? And GN is a simple function. So I said GN can be any one of these uh, functions. So GN <coughs> is a simple function if you want to compare this TN along with GN. Okay, GN is compared with this, with this function gn. gn can be any one of these things. Okay, then tn is actual count. When you have performed or when you have executed the program, you are counting how many times the basic operation is performed, right? So then you have to associate or you have to say to which efficiency class that algorithm is belonging to. So you will get the exact count. Based on the exact count, count you can able to decide is the basic efficiency class is log into base two or n, n log into base two or n square like that. So that is actually TN. Time required to execute the program is nothing but TN. Okay. So we'll go to the formal definition of big O. Look at here, C into GN, some constant with some constant you're multiplying GN and TN 
So Tn, is it below this curve C into Gn? How the? So what is the meaning of this? Is the order of growth is less than Gn? Is the order of growth of Tn, is it less than Gn? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. And is it proportionally increasing? Look at here. Yes. Yes. Okay. So can I say it's approximately same as that of C into Gn? Or it is having less order of growth compared to C into Gn? This Gn is having either same order of growth compared to C into Gn or smaller order of growth compared to C into Gn. Isn't it? Well, uh, they're increasing at the same rate. Uh... Same, same. But it can be here also, right? Yes, ma'am. It is now whatever curve I have written, it is exactly closer to C into Gn. But it can be here also, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, so we'll define like this. So class of function Tn that grow no faster than Gn. So formally we will define. So uh, it's not being changed. Uh, I have changed yesterday definition here because I'm using P here. So so tn is said to be in big O of gn, denoted, denoted as tn belong to big O of gn, if order of growth of fn is less than or equal to order of growth of gn, that is there exists positive constant c and non-negative integer n0 such that tn is less than or equal to c into gn for every n greater than or equal to n0. Okay, so look at here. Tn is less than or equal to C into Gn for every n greater than or equal to n naught. This is how you have to define asymptotic notation formally. A function Tn is said to be in big O of Gn if and only if there exists a positive constant C and non-negative integer n naught such that Tn is less than or equal to C into Gn for every n greater than or equal to n naught. Then you can say Tn belong to big O of Gn. So look at here, 10n. So 10n, is it having the smaller order of growth compared to big O of n square? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so how do you express? Because if I want to say that 10n belong to big O of n square, I should express in this format. That is Tn should be less than or equal to C into Gn. Okay, so how do I express that? How do I express that? So what is C here and what is N0? Look at here, from 0 to N0, it doesn't matter to us. And what kind of constant you have to take? It should be non-negative integer. What do you mean by non-negative integer? So can it, like uh, whatever input you are taking, is the input size, can I say minus 10, minus three, minus four, like that? Yes. Are you there in the class? I'm pretty repeat, I didn't get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I say input size. Okay, that is input you are taking from the user, right? N value. So can the N value be minus 10? Can you accept minus 10 number of elements to the array? No, ma'am. Yeah. Can you accept minus 20 number of elements to the array? Only positive. Only positive, isn't it? Is it not logical? Okay. And here, look at here, when we are defining the constant here, what kind of constant we are defining it should be a positive constant and no negative integer n not such that that's the reason we are considering only the first quadrant am i considering the second quadrant here to undo no. the analysis no you no. got it that too from when onwards it matters to me from n not onwards right so because i don't know how the function will behave from zero to n not but from n not and onwards this is true. What, what is true here? 
Tn will be always less than or equal to C into Tn. So now we'll see how we can express this 10n. Okay, I'm saying if this belongs to big O of n square, then how I can express in this way? Okay. Look at here. Uh, 10n, we said this belong to, okay, big O of, okay, it's not right here. Okay, I just... Uh, 10n belong to big O of n square. Okay, big O of n square. Yeah. So this is nothing but is it Tn? Is it Tn? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Is it Gn? What yes, is Gn here? Gn is nothing but is it n, n square, square only? Yes, yeah. Tn, is it equal to 10 into n? Yes? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Now, how do I express this? I should express in this way, Tn must be less than or equal to C into Gn for all n greater than or equal to n naught. How the? So, you have to identify this C and you have to identify this n naught. Okay. Now, okay. Yeah. 10 n sorry um, this 10 n is less than or equal to okay so n square what is the function i have identified with what i'm comparing what is my uh, basic efficiency class here which one i am using here n square n square that is gn gn this is the to compare my algorithm time so which is the standard i'm using n square that is nothing but in general we'll call that as gn how the so okay now if it is 11 okay if i consider 11 or if i consider okay no problem uh, 11 is also fine Okay, I'll not consider uh, 11 instead of 30 if I consider 2. Of, okay, if I consider 2 here. Okay, so from when onwards this condition will be true? Okay, what is N0? How do you choose N0 here? 1. Is it 1? Look at here. 10 is less than or equal to 2. 10 is less than or equal to 2. Is no, it true? No. no. Then, if it is uh, 2, 3, 4, from when it oh. satisfies? From 5 onwards? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, what is when you substitute 5 here? It's 50. 25 into 250. Okay. So here it's equal to, right? 10n is equal to 2n square. Then when n equal to 6, this is 60. So 36 into 2, 72. From 5 onwards. So will this condition will be true? Yes. That is n is greater than or equal to 5. So since I can be able to express in this way, Tn is less than or equal to C into Gn for all. Look at here. This is very, very important for all n greater than or equal to n naught. That is for n for all n greater than or equal to 5. Is this inequality holds good? You take any up to infinity. Will this inequality holds good? Yes, it will be. Yeah. So, you input size, no. 
okay so whatever may be the input size it may be 10 power 6 it may be 10 power 20 it may be 10 power 100 or 10 power 200 400 500 whatever it may be so from 5 onwards this condition holds good so with this according to the formal definition what is the formal definition it says a function tn is said to be in big o of gn if and only if there exists a positive constant c and non-negative integer n naught such that tn is less than or equal to c into gn for all n greater than or equal to n naught if this condition holds good what can i conclude i can conclude that tn belongs to big o of gn is that right yeah so with this can i conclude in this problem okay so can i conclude 10n belongs to okay big o of n square can i write like that bari boda yeah yes ma'am yeah okay so you got the definition so in detail i'll not do further remaining the definitions okay uh, you can write it by yourself okay now you got the idea of big o okay that is the function which is having the smaller order of growth compared to gn we are saying that as belonging to big o of gn so contrast to this there may be like tn may be greater than gn okay so in that case which notation will be using omega notation that is if tn is having larger order of growth compared to gn then to which efficiency class you are classifying sorry to which asymptotic notation you are classifying it into yavadi khaktira big one alli smaller okay omega use madadaga ee condition enagutte what this condition will become tn will be having larger order of growth or smaller order of growth it will be greater than equal to greater than equal to c into gn right exactly so now we'll see how this how to write the formal definition for omega of gn a function tn is said to be in omega of gn this is denoted as tn belong to omega of gn if and only if there exists a positive constant c and non negative integer n not such that tn is greater than or equal to c into gn for all n greater than or equal to n not look at the curve here so is this tn is above gn yes, yes yeah so that means so any function which is above this so will be classified into which efficiency class omega into gn you got it now yeah yeah so can i say now 10 n square belong to omega of n square because it can be uh, even now uh, it can be having same order of growth right and here n cube can i classify it into n square yes look at here so when i say log n compare log n with n okay so is log n is having smaller order of growth compared to n yes ma'am yeah so which notation i have to use in this case log n belong to big o of n or omega of n um, big o of n very good very good okay so if i say uh, uh, like n okay so n is compared with uh, n log n to base 2 or n log n to base 2 is compared with n in this case n log n to base 2 can i say this belong to big o of n or omega of n omega of n. yeah very good that means can i say this n factorial is it having the highest order of com uh, growth compared to all these functions yes ma'am yeah so can i say n factorial belong to omega of log n to base 2 yes ma'am omega of n yes omega of n log n to base 2 yes ma'am omega of n square yes omega of n cube yes omega of 
to power n yes yeah so then what is n factorial here is it serving as a upper bound or lower bound upper bound no no uh, look at here um when i say omega notation you are exactly right so how do you assess now so because n factorial is the time complexity of the algorithm we got it i'm comparing with log n to base 2 i'm comparing with n so this is serving as the lower bound right 2 power n so when you are choosing the what basic efficiency class you have to choose in such a way that at least it should be nearer to this can you able to gauge exactly what is the time complexity of the algorithm if you are choosing this this way n factorial is compared with log n to base 2 can you able to make out could be anything in between so. yeah so it can be anything in between right so that's the reason most of the time we are not using omega or big o because omega is serving as a it is giving the lower bound or upper bound omega, omega is, lower. is uh, up like if i compare n factor with log n to, to so n factor is the upper bound ah la la ivaga in general in general you said the answer now you are only reverting back so is it a lower bound y yes ma'am yes omega ma is a lower bound yes ma'am yeah so what about big go is it, it is serving the, as a upper bound yes ma'am so can the order of the uh, growth of the any algorithm can it go beyond this no ma'am no so this is the upper bound for me okay so whichever function you are taking here whose like order of growth is less than or equal to c into gn so gn is maximum here okay it cannot go beyond this so you are setting the upper bound but if the my upper bound is say n factorial assume that and i'm using a function called log n log n is compared with n factorial okay so log n to base 2 belong to big o of big o of n factorial look at here that is the upper bound i'm using yes ma'am yeah so if i use there's a meaning here so if i use for uh, this one uh, starting of two uh, starting the elements of the array the upper bound is n square that is meaningful because uh, merge sort is having the efficiency n log n to base 2 and uh, bubble sort is n square so what is the upper bound here n square n square okay so n log n to base 2 can i say n log n to base 2 is less than or equal to yes, some c into n square yeah yes, so can i say n log n to base 2 belongs to uh, big o of uh, uh, n square yes ma yeah so this is how you can uh, make the comparison record of that okay so the, that is how you can make the comparison here okay this is what the algorithm is look at the beauty of this now big o is serving as what upper bound or lower bound upper bound upper bound very good omega lower bound, lower bound. bound. okay so now because uh, like if you want to assess exactly what may be the order of growth of the algorithm better to use theta notation in theta notation uh, yeah in theta notation a formal definition here is a function tn is said to be in theta of tn if and only if there exists two positive constants c1 and c2 a non negative integer n not such that c2 into gn less than or equal to tn less than or equal to c1 into gn for all n greater than or equal to n not then you can see that yeah tn belongs to theta of gn look at here this tn is bounded above and below by function gn in this case i can say tn belongs to big o of gn got the idea yes ma'am yeah that's it the number you are uh, like uh, the number of comparison is 10 n square i can say straight away 10 n square belongs to theta of n square right yeah so that means what it's quadratic in nature 
right so approximately how many number of comparisons will be made if uh, input size is say 10 so if it is n square so how many number of comparisons will be made order of n square like, yeah uh, n square that is is it quadratic growth or linear growth um quadratic ten, right so, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay 10 andre 100 if it is 100 If the input size is hundred, then uh, how many times basic operation will be performed? Is it hundred square? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this is how it's going to happen. Okay, Napa. Yeah, you got the idea. Why we are measuring our why we are using asymptotic notation here? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So with uh, big O notation, you can assess what is the what may be the upper bound of that algorithm with. Omega notation, you can assess the lower bound, but exactly order of growth can be assessed using which notation? Which notation? Theta. Theta notation. Okay. Yeah. So you got the idea. Now that is summarized. Whatever formal definitions I have given to you, it is being summarized with this diagram here. So G N is my Like standard, right? Basic efficiency class here is G N. Okay, I am comparing the T N with G N. So on this here, Abu, I have written here. That means order of growth of this function is same or larger. When when it is here, it it is having like uh, functions will have the same order of growth compared to G N, and here the functions will will be having larger order of growth compared to G N. So all this will be classified to which notation, which uh, which asymptotic notation you can use, omega omega, and the function. Which is having the same order of growth compared to G N will be classified into theta of G N, and here you have smaller order of growth, so which can be classified into big O of G N. This is how you can uh, use three notations, okay, uh, big O, theta, and omega. We are calling this as asymptotic notation. Basically, why do you require to use this asymptotic notation? Can you please tell me? Tell me the answer. To calculate the complexity, the code complexity. Not only that, you have to compare and rank the order of growth of the algorithm. So, uh, you know that uh, algorithm efficiency of bubble sort is what is that? Big O of n square or theta of n square. But what about merge sort? Theta of n log n to two uh, base two. So, which one is most efficient? The one which is having n log n to base two you know like i have summarized in the table right so here it is being summarized so n square is having higher order of growth or n log n to base two is having higher order of growth n square so n square so bubble sort is having n square and merge sort is having n log n to base two so which one is most efficient n log n to base two n log okay so linear search is having the like Number of comparison, or I can say that big O of n is the time complexity of linear search, and binary search is log n to base two. So, which one is most efficient? Binary search or linear search? Binary search. Yes, you got it now. In Martha, there are basically here you are comparing and you are ranking the order of growth of the algorithm. Okay, so compare Marty rank Martha. There are which one is most efficient? You can able to assess with this asymptotic notation. That is the basic idea behind asymptotic notation. Arthaita, Alma, I cannot every time count how many times basic operation is performed. Instead of that, I am expressing this as a function of n, and I am assessing. So, what is the approximately? What what is the number of times you are required to do the basic operations? Okay, that is expressed as function of n, and that we are comparing with this basic efficiency class. Okay, with that I'll come to know which one is most efficient algorithm. Okay, so this is how we are saying merge sort is most efficient compared to bubble sort and bubble sort and selection sort. You got the idea now? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> so now here. 
Now, uh, this algorithm uh, proof is not required. Anyway, it's very simple also. You can learn by yourself. So uh, in this algorithm, what he says is, if T1 belong to big O of T1 of N, and T2 belong to big O of T2 N, then T1 plus, uh, T1 N plus T2 N belong to big O of maximum of T1 N comma G2 N. Okay, that is two functions are there. So whichever is having higher order of growth, then this T1 N plus T2 N will belong to maximum of these two functions. So uh, this is true for both omega and theta also. So for example, if I say phi n square plus 3 n log n2 base, base 2 is there. So if I use n log n2 base 2 uh, here and n square is there, which is having the higher order of growth, is it n square or n log n2 base 2? n square. n square. So obviously what we are trying to say that here is, so if you assume that there is an algorithm which will have two parts, one is having the efficiency 5n square, other one is having the efficiency 3n log n to base 2, then the algorithm efficiency will belong to which efficiency part? The one which is taking more time, isn't it? So one is n log n to base 2 is efficient, but other one is taking n square time. But overall efficiency of the algorithm will fall into what? Maximum one like n square. Yeah, which is least efficient part, isn't it? One which will take more time. Which is taking more time? This one, n square. You got the idea now? That is what this theorem will say. Okay, you know that when I say T1n belong to big O of G1n, then T1n is less than or equal to C1 into G1 into G1n for all n greater than or equal to n1. And similarly, if I say T2n is less than or equal to C2, sorry, uh, when I say, you know the, th when the theorem is given, okay, so whatever left hand side is given, so first we'll see, uh, we'll ex uh, formally define these things with the definition. And then I have to prove this, then part right okay so what is given to you t1 belong to t1 n of uh, n belong to big o of g1 n that indicates that t1 n less than or equal to c1 into g1 n for all n greater than or equal to n1 can i write according to the definition can i write accord, uh, according to the definition so what yes. we are saying yeah already we have uh, said here t1 n belong to big o of g1 n Andre, what is the implication? T1n is less than or equal to for some constant C1, okay? Uh, C1 into G1n for all n greater than or equal to n1. And here, since we are saying that T2n belong to big O of G2 of n, so I can say T2n less than or equal to C2 into Gn, uh, G2 of n for all n greater than or equal to n2. And we are defining some constant C3 in such a way that C3 equal to C1 plus C2 and N3 equal to maximum of N1 comma N2. C1, T1 N plus T2 N is less than or equal to C3 into maximum of G1 N into G2 comma G2 N for all N greater than or equal to N. Uh, for all N greater than or equal to N3. So with that, can I say T1 N plus T2 N belong to big O of maximum of G1 N into G, uh, G2 of N? Yeah, can I write that as uh, in this way? Bari bodapa, bari bohuda. Yeah, yeah, can the hair thingy? Okay, so you have two is, um, sorry, it will take time to write. Two is less than or equal to three. Okay, okay. Is that right? What I have written is right or not? Yes, ma'am. So 5 is less than or equal to 5. Can I write like this? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So is 2 plus 5, is it less than or equal to 2 into 5? Can I write like this? Yes, ma'am. That means in general, okay, if you have C1 less than or equal to C2 and C3 is less than or equal to C4, can I write it as C1 plus C3 is less than or equal to 2 into maximum of C2 comma C4, Bariboda? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So 
the same thing is applied here there so t1 n less than or equal to c into g n alvapa that is what we are trying to say t1 n belong to big o of g n na en anta bartvi navu so t1 n less than or equal to c1 into g1 n and since in the left hand side it's being given that what is that t2 n belong to big o of g2 n then t1 n plus t2 n belong to big o of max maximum of g1 n comma g2 n so why maximum here so from these two which is the maximum here in this example it is fine right so when you multiply it by 2 so will this condition holds good yes yes yeah so is it true for any integer is this condition holds for any integer any positive integer Forget yes, about because we are not considering uh, negative integers, right? So when this condition holds good, obviously this is tr are true for this also. That's why we are saying that t one n plus t two n less than or equal to c three into maximum of g one n comma g two n. Okay, so if that is the case, I can say t one n plus t two n belong to belong to big O of maximum of g one n comma g two n. That is the theorem. Don't worry about the pro uh, proving uh, proof part of it. So we'll see now here an algorithm. Uh, I think that there is an algorithm you have written to uh, check the uh, element uniqueness of the array. That is whether elements of the array are unique or not. So in that you have written two part. The first part is you are applying sorting algorithm. The sorting algorithm is nothing but selection sort. Assume that you are applying selection sort here. Okay. So the number of uh, uh, like basic operation you are performing here is half n into n minus one that you have counted and I have given demonstration also. So if the number of comparisons is half n into n minus one. Then can I say this belong to big O of n square, Amit? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. In the second part, once you have sorted the array, if there are duplicate elements, will it be there in consecutive locations? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Like yeah. one after another. Yeah. What is the maximum number of comparisons is required to check? uh there exists a duplicate element or not so first with yeah first with second second with third third with fourth isn't it so because uh I'll, let me write in i scribe so what we are doing here is the for, uh, assume that already i have sorted the elements of the array now by using some algorithm that is a selection sort or bubble sort okay now already uh, this is how this is looking like this only here it is being repeated okay so first one will be compared with the second one right so one comparison then second comparison right then third then fourth then fifth so how many elements are there in the array eight elements is there six, six. six. how many comparisons you are doing here is it n minus 1 comparisons yeah uh, yes ma'am yeah so that is five comparisons exactly that is what you try to say uh, amit yeah so in general okay the case what i have taken is n value is 6 and the number of comparisons what we have made is five comparison but in general if there are n elements in the array how many number of comparisons you will be making here n minus 1 comparisons okay that means can i say um, that belong to big o of n yeah what is the overall efficiency of the algorithm can you say because this is taking less time can i say efficiency of this algorithm is big o of n can i say like that no ma'am no so then it efficiency of the overall algorithm belong to the least efficient part which is the least efficient part here 
n square. The first part, isn't it? So it is taking more time, big of n square time. That is, efficiency of this entire algorithm belong to big of maximum of n square comma n. You got the idea now? You got yes, the idea? Yeah. Yes, this is how you can analyze the algorithm. Analysis of the algorithm is very, very important and um, like uh, so that you can learn how to write the efficient algorithm also you can learn and based on this analyzing the algorithm with that you will come to know like uh, how i can write the efficient algorithm so that i can minimize the time required to execute the program that you can learn and with that it it evolved different design technique anyway design technique is not there in your syllabus that is different design technique uh, for example uh, greedy technique dynamic programming backtracking branch and branch and bound all that why do you require to use different design technique why you are required to do different design technique in order to um, uh, like find the solution because you can with this you can optimize the time required to find the solution okay so we are not uh, like ready to uh, do say n factorial uh, computations, right? Uh, for example, in Dijkstra's algorithm, if I go with the brute force design technique, then I need to find out uh, n minus one factorial computations. I need to perform n minus one factorial permutation. Okay, so uh, is it that easy as the number of uh, cities increases? If the city is say 10, it is nine factorial, uh, possible number of solutions will be there. And if it is um, say 100, 99 factorial you are required to find out. Is it that easy? If you are performing that many number of computations, so sometimes you may require astronomical number, like you are required to wait for uh, say years together. Okay, by the time it will find the solution. So no one of us will be there. So next, next generation can find the solution. That is highly impossible. So for that, that kind of problem, that is one which is involving permutation object, permutation object um, or combinatorial objects, which are all combinatorial objects. That is, it can be permutation, it can, it can be combination, or it can be subset. Because uh, if the problem involving to find out number of subsets. So how many subsets are possible for a given set? Can you please tell me? If there are n elements in an array, if there are, uh, sorry, if there are n elements, we'll uh, talk about the set. So two, three, four, five. So how many sets are possible for this? Uh, four squared. Yeah, two power four, uh, isn't four. it? Yeah. So in general, if there are n elements, that is cardinality of the set is n, then how many subsets are possible? Two power n. Yeah. So, okay. The problem which is involving finding the subset, okay, also permutation or combination, you know what is permutation and combination? The Permutation is nothing but arranging the elements and combination is nothing but you are selecting. So if there are n elements from that you are required to choose all objects, right? So that is what the combination is. The function which is involving permutation, combinative, uh, combination and subset objects is called combinatorial problem. In that case, uh, the runtime will be in exponential or it will be in factorial, isn't it? So that kind of problem you are required to find the solution. So how you can find the optimal solution with less, less time is the big question for that. You are using many design techniques. So that is nothing but backtracking, branch and bound, or it can be greedy, or it can be dynamic programming. So all that design technique will be used in order to minimize the time required to find the solution. That is very interesting, but that is not there in the syllabus. But as and when uh, I take that uh, like topic, I'll tell you what, what kind of design technique we have adopted in order to write the algorithm, okay? So uh, with, this, with this, I'll be uh, like winding off this class.